This is video three in a series on my Costal XL printer. Um, for a lot more information, you can check out my blog post. In this video, I'm going to go through some of the gotchas and the electronics hooking up the wires and so forth and try to help you uh, speed up the process. I apologize because I'm definitely skipping over a lot of things. So I'm sure that you're going to come into contact with some, some pain that uh, I didn't mention here. So you can see that I started out and I was planning on doing three color printing. So you can see there's three extruders, three filament spool holders, and I was going to come down into something like this. It's got, uh, could accept three uh, different filament colors and blend them down into a custom color. Now this sounds really good, and but um, this technology is very cutting edge, very bleeding edge, so I suggest that for a beginner you definitely want to just start with a regular metal version 6, you know, hot end. I'm just grabbing these $10 hot ends on eBay and they're awesome. They come with a cooling fan and so forth. Alright, the extruder motor. The extruder motor is a stepper motor and it's got four wires on it. And these wires usually are not long enough. We need about a, over a meter to come all the way over to my electronics right in here. And you can see that I've got all the wires in there. They're nice and, and concealed. Right here is a splice. So that's all the longer the, my stepper motor wire was. So I ended up slicing off the end, soldering on more wires, and putting heat shrink tubing in there. So there's an Arduino Mega. This is the brains of the entire printer. The firmware is loaded on this. On top of the Arduino, we plug a ramps shield. So that's this board right here. This board has modular stepper con uh, controllers. So each one of these little boards controls one of the stepper motors. So either a motor for movement or one of the motors for an extruder. These stepper motors just plug in here and if one burns out you're only out about five bucks. Just plug in a new mo stepper driver. So for a regular Kossel printer you really just need three for movement and one for an extruder. If you're doing three colors there's one more spot for an extruder then you can get another extender board here uh, for the third. You can see that these stepper motors down here, the wires were long enough, so this is the the end that actually came on the stepper motor. When I load firmware on, I jog the motor, make sure it's going the proper direction, and then I mark which side I want to be facing a certain direction. So if I turn this around, the motor will actually turn in the opposite direction. So get it the way you like it, I used a little fingernail polish and marked all my wires, so if I have to take them off, it's pretty simple to get them all back on here. This is stepper for the X, Y, and a Z. Now that's typically used for a Cartesian printer where you have a build surface, which is your Y, I believe. X goes across and Z is up and down. And then we have extruders here. You can see there's an extruder 0, extruder 1, and then this would be extruder 2. Once again, this is a, some wires I had to splice into that extruder motor. And I just used some female, it's like 2.5 millimeter uh, header pins. So, you know, I just plugged it in a, one way, and if it was going the wrong way, turned it around and I marked it. You can also reverse the motor direction in the firmware but I think it's nice to go ahead and get all the wires right first and then you can reverse things if you need to. Okay, so the in-stop wires, there's a in-stop matching that particular axis. So let's say this is the X stepper motor then there's an X in-stop. So when it comes up to the top and the, the printer resets, 
it says, okay, this is zero, then it can go down and start printing. The in stops plug in here, there's an, uh, this little board right here is for the LCD screen. Then over here we have outputs for the, this one on the left is D10, it's for the hot end. The next one I'm using for a fan. So this output turns on these bed fans. And then this next one here is for the heat bed. You can see the heat bed here. We've got some pretty fat wires. This is going to pull a little bit of current. So you want like number 14 wires. And then this is a temperature sensor to, to sense the temperature of the bed. I came back here to a cool little connector. So it's easy for me to take the, the heat bed off, off and get it out of the way if I'm working on something. Power is pretty straightforward. I've got a three conductor plug that comes around. I'm switching the hot so I can turn everything on and off. And then that AC power comes in here. You can see there's L is for line, N is for neutral, and then there's the ground. That's the green pin. Then over here for power, I'm coming off maybe with more wires than I need to, but this is some nice flexible number 12 gauge wire. You can probably do 14. At minimum, you're going to want two runs of wires. You can see that there are two power inputs. So one of these power inputs is going to power the Arduino board and your electronics. The other wire is dedicated for all the motors. And it's good to have these separate, that way when the motors draw down power, it goes all the way back to the power supply, and it doesn't uh, dip down the voltage that's powering your electronics. That third power I'm bringing back here, and I'm fusing it, which isn't really necessary. This is all basically an accessory. You don't have to do this, but I thought it was kind of nice to bring back some power into a central location so I can power stuff, and um, a lot of these wires from the RAMS board comes in here and it's a central point where I can terminate stuff too. A lot of these wires over here are for fans and lights. So here's the general idea. I get power in here and I have all of these are, are positive terminal blocks for general use. These black ones are all negatives. So I bring power in and I have a little cable assembly here that comes to this front control panel. And I'm running power in on this purple, so I'm just running power, power, power. And then we switch it first. So on this red one, you can see we can switch these LEDs on and off. But then I'm also running it through a 1K potentiometer. And you can twist that potentiometer and brighten and dim these LEDs. And of course, I'm doing the same thing for my white lights. The white lights are definitely useful, the red not so much, but it's nice being able to see what you're doing when you're in here scrutinizing your print to see what, what the heck's going on. And then the third thing is for these fans. I like to have fans that cool my print. And once again, they're coming out of this center output. You know, one of these, this big transistor is running it. So it's already a variable output. The firmware will give you a different fan speed based on what it thinks the print needs. Essentially, these two wires come over to my terminal blocks. One wire is, is hardwired to the fans. The other wire comes in here, and once again, that power will come in where I can switch it off if I want to, and then I can adjust that speed if I want to. And then my wire management. This is expandable wire sleeve. You basically just stick it on, on your wires, and once you get it where you want it, you go ahead and put a little tape there, and you just go like this, and it looks gorgeous. 
I think that was a lot of fun actually making it look nice. And all my wires come back here to the back and go in the split loom. You can get this in a, at an automotive store. And another thing, if you're making your own cable for a stepper motor, um, if you get the wires out of order, the stepper motor might just go bleh and it, it'll hardly move. That means your wires are kind of out of order. What you can do is just swap the outside two wires. Try it again. If that doesn't work, swap the outside two. If that doesn't work, try, try swapping the inside two until the motor moves smoothly. Then the last thing I'll mention is this heat bed. So the glass is 300 millimeters but this heat bed is 220. I'm not real happy with that but it's what I have. This heat bed is just a PC board and it, it's kind of flexible so I, I taped it on there but it wasn't making really good contact so I actually put heat sink compound up there and then I made these little springs so that when you put that the build plate down this is going to push on this board just a little bit and make sure it's making good contact so it warms up. I would like to mention the build surface. The way I'm attaching it to my printer is I've got two layers of double sticky tape. It's this stuff. It's a foam tape. I put a piece of paper on it because I didn't really want it to stick. But the main purpose that this provides is if your plate is touching the aluminum it'll be conducting its heat into the aluminum and it's almost impossible to get your build plate up to temperature so and of course I've got these awesome knobs here I think that's good for this video um, if you get stuck while trying to assemble your printer or plug all the electronics in, go to reprap.org. They have a, a wiki just a wiki page just for the ramps, electronics, and a pinout, so you can kind of see where everything plugs in.